So here we have a Wolfstorm front bumper. I don't think it has a model name because they only make one. These are a four millimeter Allen wrench. This thing weighs 86 pounds. Well, with the packaging that weighs, you know, probably two pounds. Some zip ties. And here's a box of hardware. Bag of four bolts and a bag of spare parts. Must reuse all of the factory hardware. And I do not see any instructions. So because of the way I have these lights wired, I have to remove the front grill. To get to the wiring, that's the wiring form. It's the best way I could find to hide it. To remove the front grill, you need to remove this whole piece. Just a flathead screwdriver. So there's like, I don't know, seven to 13 of those. Take them all out. So some of these are in a deep well and you can either two flathead screwdriver or if you have a pair of these, I think they're called panel clip pliers. If you have a good pair, because these don't fit. Just one from each side. Don't forget the one over here on the air box. Now I have foot struts, but I chose to leave my prop rod because I live where it gets pretty cold. Not Alaskan cold, but pretty cold. And sometimes hood struts don't work in the cold. These all the way in the front. I remember right, it just pulls off. Couple of eight millimeter for the license plate bracket. This bottom trim.
pretty sure he just pulls off. So you got to take the fender flares off. They don't come off that easy. I mean, you don't need any tools, but it also sounds horrendous. Sounds horrendous, but nothing's broken. And you go behind the lower trim here, pull it straight out. And the front is just pull straight out. imagine they'd be so tight holding a bumper on so I just slit the um, this jacket on the red wires and the solder just fell apart look at that garbage I didn't have much faith in them but I wanted waterproof that's why I used them Now, routing the wire for these lights was not easy. And I didn't know until I was at the point taking these off, which I cut them, that there was an option for fog lights already hitting the bumper. I thought only the metal bumpers came with the fog lights. I manufactured the mounting plates out of 8th or 316th aluminum. Apparently I used two different sized bolts. Third time's a charm. And I had to modify the bolts in order to not have to get a wrench on the backside. Because I don't think I could. Maybe on a few of them. That one I had to shear part of the head off to, to get it to clear something. So you already had these holes. That I used for the bolts. Problem was, there was no way to mount the light to this plastic with this giant hole here. That's why I made the aluminum plate. And that one, I welded a nut to to get it to stop spinning. And I sheared part of the head off. Tiny bolts holding this bumper on. Pretty heavy for a plastic bumper. This bumper is 90 pounds by myself. The foam is keeping everything from sliding around.
Gonna lower it just a little bit. Remember, we're sitting at an angle. One bolt. It's always one bolt that fights you. This is the rigid that they discontinued with the interchangeable heads. It's great they came out with just an angle drill head. I mean an angle drill, one unit, but no impact. I use the impact a lot at work. Get those snubbed up. This is a Makita impact adapter. And they're nice because they're they're a wobble head. I don't like the fact that you can lock them straight. Now this angle head is about half the torque of that first rigid impact gun I was using, which is the oh, R8-6037. So this is good for snugging stuff up. It will not cross thread a bolt anywhere near this size. So they give you this cover on top if you're not running a winch but if you're running a winch what are you supposed to do with the holes <laughs> 